Let me turn them because it has shown me some in my pattern. There you go. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Right. I'm here today to talk about an investigative project to do with does aesthetics not too high cost for pedigree dogs. She used to curse the keys. Firstly, a brief introduction into what happens with these dogs. For well, in the most recent years, all these breeds um, of um, dogs such as Chihuahuas, Cavaliers, um, German Shepherds, Dobermans, all kinds of big and small dogs have been subject to um, inbreeding or breeding with dogs who have got severe health problems. And this has thus caused um, serious health problems both mentally and physically with many pedigree dogs. And a lot of these pedigree dogs can actually be seen at crafts where the because of the cake kennel club, breed standards are set and every show breeder or dog owner alike um, must abide <coughs> to these standards to make a dog that is deemed suitable for registration by the kennel club from its looks. Um, unfortunately, with this comes a severe amount of problems. The breed standards are so set without any leeway either way for various different you know, the dog can be a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller or not have this and not have that, you know. Um, so, I mean, one problem is with Cavaliers is that they've been bred to have a very small skull and thus causing Swingomyelia, which is where the brain is too large for the skull um, and it has an array of health problems, which you further on will see in a short video clip. Um, they, <coughs> it's... It, been a quite a prolific thing in the past recent years with various televised documentaries, veterinary professionals putting their input into what exactly is going on. Um, unfortunately, although campaigns and various other things have been set to try and help and improve what is happening, not a huge amount has been done. Um, in this investigative project, it was set up so a questionnaire was designed in order to ask 10 dog owners and 10 non-dog owners exactly their thoughts on pedigree dogs and their aesthetics and the questions involve things such as would you buy a pedigree dog knowing it has aesthetic problems such as back legs are weak or the head is too small you know all these sort of things that most people may not even take into account when they're buying a dog or even think about and many people research the breed but not the health problems that these breeds can have but only the temperament and their looks Unfortunately, because of this, the breeding of these dogs still continues because the breeders think, well, they want a dog with, you know, that looks exactly like this and with no differences at all. And unfortunately, the health problems come from this. And by undertaking this investigative project, it was found that a, this difference was very much split between the 10 dog owners asked and the 10 non dog owners asked. And the results are as well. <clears throat> Firstly, a large amount of demographics who answered yes, I think it came to just about 242, said yes. There was also several who said no, and more said maybe, and some were indifferent completely to subject matter at all, um, which is in itself quite worrying. But although they may not be interested in dogs themselves, the fact that most people are animal lovers um, shows concerns that, you know, these animals are suffering, which who is not successful. Here the dog owner results can be seen. The question is from 1 to 20, and the number of dog owners were 10. Um, a majority gave a yes answer, but the answer did vary from no to maybe to indifferent. As you can see, the indifferent answers were very few. Interestingly enough, the dog owners have a smaller response of yes than that of the non-dog owners. This can be seen here, um, with 100% asking answering yes to the first three questions, and the third 100% answer on number 13 and 15. These questions were all designed to really gather the thoughts of 
the dog owners and the non-dog owners, and to allow the information to be correctly um, transformed into data which could give worthwhile results and prove what was given as to these dogs do suffer. This is a Sharpei. Sharpeis are known to have rolls of skin, um, and in their breed standards it states they must have a rolled sort of skin, not overly rolled, but enough to identify the breed as what it is, and a large head and big eyes. As you can see here, the rolls are hugely over-exaggerated, the dog cannot see properly, there is pressure on the nose from the skin, which would give breathing problems to the dog itself. Um, joint problems can also occur. They can also suffer terrible skin conditions, and to the point where all the hair will actually just completely go. You can get sores. Um, along with this, it's blindness. Um, a whole array of different issues that they suffer just because of somebody's need to just extravagant horses set to them by the kennel club. And sadly enough, um, because much of this breeding is done with showing in mind, the dogs are bred to fit the show, not the show to fit the dogs. And the judges alike at these dog shows also will go for dogs like this, not dogs who are much healthier in their appearance. I now have a brief video clip of a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel with Sangre Mania. It's called Syringa myelia, and it's caused because the cavalier's skull is now too small for its brain. The brain is like a, a size 10 foot that's been shoved into a size... As you can see there, the cavalier can charge by himself as fits from its skull being so small. Other problems can occur, such as problems walking, difficulty breathing can also occur, um, and unfortunately it's not something that can be cured. There is treatment, but it can never be cured, and these dogs do live a very short life, and this is purely down to the aesthetics caused by the breeders. One of the top Cavalier and Charles Spaniels in this country for showing, um, who has won a huge amount of different accolades in the dog showing world, has in fact got Syngomalia, and is still being used to be bred for them today. Another issue is um, hip dysplasia in a German Shepherd. As you can see, the top line is very sloping and there's a lot of pressure on the back legs. Because of this, the front of the German Shepherd gets hugely muscular and the dog suffers a lot of weakness. It, it, it's unable to move properly, it can't jump up, it can't walk downstairs. A, a huge array of uh, daily goings on that your average dog at home would be able to do, it can't because of this. There is surgery available for these dogs but it comes with a, a high cost, the dog suffers a lot of pain, it's a very long operation and it's weeks of recovery to ensure that they get better. And even then, it is not, you know, it will never fully live a normal life of a dog. Um, what causes hip dysplasia is the socket and the joint of the dog's legs do not fuse properly together, there's a space between them and it sort of rubs in areas it shouldn't and as they're walking it can sometimes hit as well. Another issue is Rhodesian Ridgebacks. A ridge on a Rhodesian Ridgeback is actually a foot. It is not meant to be there. Um, but because, again, of breeding and the kennel club, it has been made into something that is entirely acceptable. Because of a ridge, the Rhodesian Ridgeback suffers from a thing called dermoid sinus surgery. Um, dermoid sinus. <laughs> and it's basically a small hole in the ridge which sort of leads into the spine. This area can become infected um, and can cause a whole array of problems with these dogs. There is surgery available for it, as shown here, um, but again, it's lengthy and it's painful and it, it's unnecessary. The dog should not have to go through this because of somebody's breeding. It's a brief x ray of hip dysplasia, and here you can see various forms normal hips here. Um, as a dog with moderate hip dysplasia and severe hip dysplasia. As you can see, the joints are really 
separated from the sockets. This is a Clumber Spaniel. Um, this dog, in fact, was used at Discover Dogs last year um, to promote the breed. Um, and I think by the looks of it, you can see it's not really doing much promotion. The dog has very saggy skin around its eyes and jowls. Um, from this, it can suffer breathing problems, blindness, other eye conditions, which cause you know, a whole array of problems that, again, they should not have to suffer with. Another sad thing as well is these dogs are prone to obesity. Now, unfortunately, part of, part of that aesthetics for showing, and even dog owners like, is for these dogs to be big and muscly. But many will feed these dogs up and up to give the appearance of the dog being muscly, but sadly they're just extremely overweight. This is Pekingese. As you can see, they're very, very hairy, and they have indeed been bred to be like this. Unfortunately, it does come at a price. The hair on the Pekingese is very thick. It can cause a huge amount of problems. Um, it's mats. If a dog gets too hot, it can't. it's very hard for the dog to cool itself down. Um, another issue is, and you can see here, the short snout on the Pekingese, which causes breathing problems to the dog. Um, it's, the nostrils are quite pinched as well, so breathing air in itself is a challenge, letting it get into the lungs and everything else. It's, it's all very difficult, you know. And again, this has been bred to have a very squished in the face and all to fit these standards set. This is a Basset Hound 60 years ago. As you can see, there is a huge difference between a Basset Hound of today. Note with short legs, longer ears, a much more heavy sort of skin. Um, and these dogs, because of this, suffer, again, with eyesight problems, breathing. They have problems walking properly. They also get a lot of back problems too. Um, and because of this, it's, you know, they end up with... I mean, when you see them at Crofts, you see these dogs and you think, oh yes, they look, you know, absolutely wonderful, they're what the breed is supposed to be. But because of that, people could then go out and buy these dogs, thinking that's correct. And in reality, this is correct, and that is a much healthier dog, with far less problems than this dog. When it came to analysing, discussing and evaluating the investigative projects, um, a huge amount was looked at over the questions actually asked. What would be achieved from those questions? Would the results give an accurate answer? Would the people who are, were giving the questions know themselves what they were truly being asked? Um, this was especially apparent in the non-dog owners, as you'd hope to think that in the dog owners, a much more insightful opinion to be able to be given from owning the dogs, knowing what problems can occur, whereas the non-dog owners are not ignorant to it, but they're not as aware as a dog owner as to what problems could be going on. Um, there were some areas of improvement could, that could have been adjusted to the questionnaire. Firstly, is asking the demographics of whether you're male or female, their age range, and how long they don't dogs for. Or if they weren't a dog owner at that time, then you know, ask when did you last own a dog? Have you ever thought of owning a dog? The questions that were asked in the questionnaire did highlight these, but if you were to buy a dog, could you buy a dog known with aesthetic problems, but because you so much desire that look, you would buy that dog? Would you buy a puppy from breeders who have, are known for breeding dogs with health problems, but because you yourself particularly want a certain look, disregarding any problems that would have with the dog, and also encouraging the breeder to breed dogs like this, um, so all these questions were asked, and therefore I managed to gather the results as to what those people felt towards this. The answers given clearly showed a need for change, to change the ways of the kennel club, the breeders, and dog owners themselves on their opinions and thoughts and ideas on what should be happening. Campaigns such as the Fit for Function campaign by the kennel club have been used to help um, improve situations, but it's very difficult to monitor every single breeder in the country. Um, at Crofts this year, they introduced a new scheme that every dog who won best of breed had to be vetted before they could go on for the best in show and the groups. 